okay, well, oh, that's it. There's your 2X diagnosis on the boards. You're like done and you move on. In real life, you take a little more time. But, um, but what's that? Oh, it's so cellular blue nevus. Exactly. It's like a, it's the dumbbell, right? The bulging nodule of dense cellular nevus cells pushing down into the deep dermis or subcutis. Pigment sometimes is abundant, but actually I feel more often I see ones that are hypopigmented when I see cellular blues. Okay. The thing is, is some books will show a picture like this and they'll call it deep penetrating nevus. And it's exactly what I would call a cellular blue. And they'll like call things cellular blue that I would call deep penetrating. And I used to say, oh, it's so easy to tell them apart. And then we did a study, which was recently got, they got published. And I realized, and we did them back to back. It actually is a little more hard to tell apart than I thought. So uh, arrogance is quickly cured um, with experience and um, one way or the other. But to me, I think this bulging dumbbell shape is really good for cellular blue nevus. And one of the things I find most helpful is, look, before we look at the cellular stuff, go up to the top and out to the sides in the dermis. And almost always cellular blue nevus will have stuff like this. And if I showed you a picture of that, that's slam dunk regular old blue nevus. Almost always you can find a conventional blue nevus component at the upper periphery of the lesion as it interfaces with the dermis, spindle cells, bland, sclerotic background, pigmented melanophages in the background, and a little bit of dusty pigment of variable amounts in the spindled melanocytes, okay? So find blue nevus, and then in the middle it gets cellular and dives down deep and makes a nodule. Awesome, cellular blue. The, this is one of those nevi that breaks the rules of maturation. Nevi are supposed to be more cellular at the top and get less cellular in smaller cells as you go down. This does precisely the opposite of that, okay? But don't worry about it, okay? And as you get down here, they're, they're oval or even round cells, but they tend to be real uniform in size. You might get occasional mitosis even down deep. That's okay. You don't want to see atypical mites. You don't want to see severe pleomorphism. If you start seeing real big nucleoli, you got to think about clear cell sarcoma of soft, of soft tissue and, and uh, weird melanomas. There are melanomas that mimic blue nevi. So there are some other things. The buttock of a, of a kid is the best place to see these, but I see them also in the extremities and other sites too. And um, our clinicians tend to usually like to excise them because a lot of times they'll broadly transect it and they go back and excise it. And I don't think I've ever seen a case that on excision was actually something more nefarious. But uh, the most important thing is whatever name you use, deep penetrating cellular blue, they probably are different molecularly actually. Um, these actually have GNAC mutations, GNAQ, which is, goes along with blue nevi. And deep penetrating neva, some of them at least have, um, have HRAS uh, mutations, which is what you see in spits. They're probably related to spits nevi. So at least that's my, my general understanding. But the most important thing is weird benign nevus and not melanoma. That's the important take home. Don't call it melanoma, okay? Whatever name you use, doesn't matter. Just don't call it melanoma because it looks so weird. And if you're not familiar with it, you're going to see that and see some mites and you're going to freak out, right? Don't freak out. Keep calm. Put the case on your desk and come back tomorrow. And if you're still worried, send it for a consult, okay? Just not to me. If it's something real easy to diagnose, you can send it to me. Otherwise, send it to Raj, okay? Cellular blue nevus. And they strongly stay with HMV45. So that's the other thing. Is, have you guys heard of that? HMV45 is supposed to highlight maturation in nevi. I feel like it works really great in perfect classic nevi where I don't need it at all. And the more atypical and weird and diagnostically challenging it gets, the less easy it is to interpret, of course, right? Thank you, body, for making it hard for us. Um, but the, the, the big epithelioid cells at the top of a nevus are strong HMV45 positive in the junction component. And as you go deeper in the dermis, you lose expression of, of HMV45. Blue nevi break that rule though. They tend to be diffuse strong HMV45 all the way down. And what is the, HMV45 is human melanoma black. That's what it stands for. Try that out at a cocktail party. See what happens. I don't know where the 45 comes from. Probably some molecular weight or something stupid. Um, but what's the antigen that it targets? Because it's always good to know both names, the antibody name and the antigen name, because you never know which one the boards will ask. And you can know everything in the world, but not knowing the alternate name, you miss the question, which is not cool, right? I don't write the questions. What's the, what's the, what antigen is being stained by HMV45? It's GP100. It's a molecule in the melanosome complex. So again, these things are nevi that make a bunch of pigment. They got a bunch of melanosomes. They stain strongly with HMV45.